So let me explain a little bit about the case you're about to see. This is, uh, and you might have seen him on a couple of other videos, really stiff guy. He had a near amputation of just the, the um, ring finger, right? The ring finger, but just the tip, but he is so, so stiff. He came in, I think he came in late, but he was already just had a tendency for a ton of stiffness. So when he came in, his hand, he could barely move his hands. Um, and he looked like he potentially could have been a CRPS uh, type of patient. And um, it was a little too early, so I, I dismissed that. I, I didn't. I didn't choose to believe it. He didn't have um, some of the other signs um, of a CRPS, um, but it could have it could have gone that way. But we worked a lot on um, edema, sensory types of issues. But stiff hands are just going to be painful. So like, is CRPS or is just a freaking hard ass stiff hand? So he's really really stiff, and um, though his hands have gotten better. This ring finger, which of course is the weakest finger, right, keeps going into this flexion contracture. And so he came in like pretty bad and they wanted to, they were like, listen, you just need to do a ton of therapy. We have done a ton of therapy with him. He's come daily for like two months and then um, he's gone down to like three times a week. Very good about coming, not so good about doing his stuff at home. Like, you know, those people will say they do shit at home, but you know, like he can kind of show you, but he's tired after he goes um, after work. And so he's a laborer. So he um, just does some, but probably not enough. Like he's probably just like your typical, like, oh, I'm just going to try to move it, which caused a lot of problems at the beginning. So his hand's like way better than it used to be, even though he still continues with this. And here is the problem. This is what I normally say with a really stiff hand. You need a minimum of 30 degrees, right? You don't want more than that. If you have more than 30 degrees at your PIP, it starts to get in the way of your function. So imagine if he's coming at 40 and I get him to 30, like just without any any stretching, but I just try to stretch him a little bit and already he gets to like 30. He has, um, a real good chance of getting even further and when we stretch him he gets about like 25 and he's gotten even better than that he just can't keep it right so he can't keep it the problem is he's casting and then during the week he doesn't want to use the cast during the week he's like oh no my work and blah 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 and I use the splint at night but honestly if you if you dig in a little bit he's not really using the splint at night because he puts it on but I guess for whatever reason it comes out when he wakes up it comes he comes with it like um, uh, bent, right? Because he's 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 taking it off in the middle of the night, probably unconsciously or whatever. So we're not able to keep it. And when you have a stubborn and you have a stubborn um, a case, you have to make your case of like why you want them to do what you want, and then you have to explain the consequence of not getting it. So he's essentially giving me one more month. The surgeons or the doctor's office giving me one more month. He's giving me one more month. He's like, I'm tired of coming to therapy. Like whatever they are say that I, I need the surgery, but I don't want the surgery because he doesn't want to stop working, you know? And since it's not hurting him anymore, he's just like, whatever. So I said, listen, you're coming in at 40, right? I, I take my gonium, right? You're coming in at 40 and get you to 25. What's gonna happen is if I can't get you better and then you stop coming to therapy, your 40 will become 50, might become 60, right? So if you're not doing your stuff at home, you could lose some of the stuff that you've gained. And this is what happens when your finger starts to bend down. People think the ring finger isn't important, right? But if it starts to bend down and you go to grab something, because you can't straighten out that finger, it's gonna knock into things. It's gonna, it, you're gonna end up knocking things over as you try to grab it. So I said, listen, if you start trying to grab your beer with that right hand and that finger is down, you're going to end up knocking your beer over. <laughs> you start knocking your beer over, you're going to be really unhappy with the fact that like we didn't get this finger straight. And then at some point in your life, you're going to be like, I need surgery. And it might be a little late. So my point is, is that when you explain why you want what you want, you have to explain 
not just the why, but the consequences, right? The consequences. So I told them the consequence. And I made it a point to talk about, you know, like we joke around a lot about drinking and beer and whatever, but he probably doesn't, you know, but but um, I make jokes and stuff like that to, to ease up the, you know, the frustration and, and the consequences of therapy and stuff. Like he's just tired, you know, it's like he's been coming for months. And I was like, listen, if you're giving me one more month and the doctor's giving me one more month, then this in this month, I need you to wear your cast because the cast is the thing that has been making his finger straight. Not the splinting, not the stretching. The cast has shown us time and time again that it loosens up his finger and it makes him tight. He just can't keep it. And for a very stubborn PIP contractor, I need him to wear that, that cast all the time. And I said, oh, but he's like, oh, but I can't wear it during my work. I was like, what are you doing during your work, dude? I was like, if you are, it's a laborer. If you're sitting there and grabbing heavy stuff and doing stuff, you can wear it because nothing is requiring you to do fine motor or stuff like that. It's not requiring you to really bend your finger. All it's requiring you to is to do lifting and you can keep that straight. So if you, you know, if you really want to make it, if you really want to see a change, you have to to wear the, the cast every day. Like, not just on the weekends, because what happens is he wears on the weekend, it gets him straight, and then during the week, Monday through Friday, he doesn't wear it, and then he loses whatever we've gained. So now we go into the cycle of frustration, right? So I'm tired of being frustrated, he's tired of being frustrated, I'm like, listen to me. <laughs> so sometimes it takes a, a couple more times, but really, um, at the end of the day, you have to give really good foundational like reasons why you're recommending what you're recommending, what the consequences of not following your recommendations. So you just have to know um, that something works and, and sound really confident. I was like, even if you're wrong, like just we gotta do it, you know. And he has agreed. He has agreed we're doing it. And then watch his video. I tell him two things that he has to do. Only two things he has to do. All right. I hope you uh, enjoy the video. So sometimes when you have a really stubborn joint, um, you might want to use certain things to help you stretch them out. So I already used heat to stretch them out, but then um, to get all my hot stuff, all my casting stuff ready, I wanted to continue to stretch them out a little bit extra. And so I just wanted to put like a lip to stabilize his metacarpal joint so that he doesn't go into hyperextension. So I put something underneath the MP joint and put something underneath here so I can get a little bit additional stretch. And what I did was I just put a hot pack and then I put a five pound weight on it. And you're not gonna see it underneath, but I checked on his finger underneath to make sure that it had like a nice little pull. And just additional five minutes while I do the, got my cast stuff ready. And I just use my goniometer. Sometimes I will use like a um, a lid or something. So it's got a really stubborn contraction. So I want to get to it's like 30. I want to try to get to actually it's probably better than 30. I'm trying to get to like 25. Yeah. Oh, like 28, 25. So I'm gonna cast him and I'm gonna leave his eyepiece free. I saw this somewhere, I can't remember where. Let's put the glove on. Hold on. There you go. That way I don't have to clean up as much.
check in between the web space. the weekend all I want you to do is pull this little knuckle back when this is all right so you're gonna fold it like this so all he's doing is blocking we're gonna do this all we're gonna do is hold it and then block I don't even care about the other fingers. <laughs> That's all the dedos, no, no importante. Alright, so you're just gonna relax your wrist. Just pull it back. Yes, all day, all day. Whole weekend. I think he keeps contracting because the profundus, the profundus is so stuck and in order for you to break through that flexion contracture, the flexor, the profundus needs to be able to open and go all the way back, right? And because it can't, it keeps pulling and pulling into flexion. So literally my finger is here, so I control, and then I'm just pulling that profundus. Alivia. So if I did it without the cast, it would look like this. My, my thumb is underneath the PIP, my finger is controlling the MP, and I'm pulling. Alivia. In our joints, we have a little rotational give passively 
and sometimes when people are really tight it's good to stretch them in that direction to loosen them up and usually there's one direction that feels better than the other ¿Y siente alivio aquí o aquí? La otra. So there's usually one direction that they feel really good in. So that's the direction you can move them towards. And then you'll notice that they might be able to bend a little bit further. So if I hook my finger to hold the and hold the proximal phalanx. I'm gonna shift the middle and the distal. Right? I see. Out of here. So inside here, I can do the same thing. Aquí, aquí, no, aquí. that hard because the PIP is stuck, is casted. go in different directions. <laughs> and different. No wonder. No wonder so stiff. So I'm actually putting him into extension. I'm using my fingers to rotate. Rotate. My thumb here is pushing into the PIP. My my index finger is hooked to control the MP. And then this hand, so one hand stabilizes and one hand does the moving. Okay, so my right hand is doing the moving. So I can alternate my, my pinch because it's requiring me to pinch. You see my elbows above my shoulder, right? But I also can do it this way. My elbows down. So when you're working with stiff fingers, it's good to change your positions so that you don't get tired. All right, let's check. Stretch the profundus, which is pretty much a DIP, but in order to really stretch that profundus, you've got to control the PIP and the MP. Let's see. No, let's see. That's a 
this better? That's in the house, right? Eh? Oh no. She made a cambiar. No, but I'm not It changed. It changed. What's wrong with your finger? <laughs> well, no, you check it. And the whole la otra. Pero ahora. No wonder your fingers are so stiff. <laughs> Jesus Christ almighty. Este dedo no mismo mujer. Cambia de no. <laughs> Did I say that right? His small finger is like a woman. He's changing his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Uno lado, he wanted to go this way. Otro, ahora, cambia. She changed her mind and now wants to go this way. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, see. It's because I miss you. I miss you. Mejor? Oh, you see? Stress a woman a little bit and straighten out. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> terrible, terrible. <laughs> I got jokes for days. <laughs>